Welcome to the Roller Coaster Ride of Business with Hannah Edwards on Global Voice Radio. Hannah and her guests share the real deal, the ups and downs, the highs and lows of building a business. Here is your host, Hannah Edwards. Hey guys, and welcome to the Roller Coaster Ride of Business. I'm your host, Hannah Edwards, and I just want to thank you for joining me. So today we're going to be talking about self-care as an entrepreneur, because when you're so focused on your business, when you're a business owner and you work from home, or even when you've got a job, like this can be for any part of your life like we get so bogged down with the day-to-day stuff that we forget what it is that we're actually doing because we're not taking care of ourselves there's no self-care in our schedule like we pack ourselves with meetings with tasks that we have to do give ourselves a to-do list of 20 items that we must complete before we come off the clock And then even in the evenings, when we've got our closing hours, we're still there checking emails. I know I'm guilty of it. A day that I set aside as being a no business day, I still find myself checking my emails, logging onto Facebook to see how things are doing on my pages and like logging into the business groups that I'm a member of to see if I can offer anyone there any advice and stuff. And you end up reaching burnout. And when you're burnt out, you're no good for your business, you're no good for anyone, and you're especially no good for you. So today's show is all about sharing tips on how to improve that self-care and to make sure that you get into a self-care routine where you're looking after yourself. And by looking after yourself, you're blasting your business in the best possible way. So... Obviously, self-care is important to improve your well-being and your mental health. And obviously, this show is to help this week to help you avoid burnout so that you can improve on everything. And I'm hoping that these tips that I'm going to share with you will help you avoid all of that and improve your mental health and your well-being. So the first tip is important is to make sure you get a good night's sleep. I know it sounds ridiculous when someone someone's there saying to you, oh yeah, make sure you get a good night's sleep. But so many of us don't. We go to bed and before we even shut in our eyes, we're still checking our emails. That last minute email might come through, the last minute message from a client. And you're just like, oh, I'm just going to reply because I don't want them thinking that they're, I'm ignoring them. And that's not what, that's not any good. Like you need to make sure that at least an hour before you go to bed, you make sure your phone, your internet is off on your phone. So you're not getting distracted by anything. Um, I know most of us nowadays use our phones as our alarm. But if you don't, if you have an alarm in the bedroom, leave your phone downstairs when you go to bed, because then you can't check it. Because when you're in your nice warm bed, the last thing you're going to want to do is get up. So seven to eight hours is the recommended minimum amount of sleep that we need that then refreshes our brain and helps us reach our maximum performance for the next day. Um, You're all refreshed and ready to go. So tip two is to celebrate your wins and big yourselves up. As humans, there are a bunch of us. I'm like it as well. I'm an introvert. I don't like shouting out about myself. And so many other people don't like it either. But And I've been told by so many people to celebrate my wins, to go onto that group and say, hey, today I managed to do this. I signed a new client. I redesigned my website. Whatever it is you're doing that is a win in your business, in your personal life, in your job, celebrate it big yourself up because by giving all the positive energy out and celebrating those wins you're getting rid of any negative thoughts because we are so quick to be negative about ourselves but we're so slow to be positive about the good things that we've done so you need to change your mindset if you don't know what I'm talking about when I say mindset go back onto 
a previous show of mine with Kelly Garcia where we talk about journaling and mindset and how things are good for us um, because changing your mindset so that you only celebrate the positive gets rid of the negative thoughts and then we get such an energy boost because actually we're feeling good we're celebrating everything we should be celebrating we're shouting out and people are going oh my god yeah that's really good well done we're getting celebrated by our friends and it just makes you feel so good there's no way that bigging yourself up and celebrating a win will leave you feeling bad so the second tip I know is difficult for a lot of people in their business, for myself especially, because I have a virtual assistant business, which means everything for me is done online. And I have my online digital magazine, which means both of those require me to be on my phone or on my laptop. And so the next tip I know for a lot of others as well that use their computers and their phones for their business and are constantly on it this is going to be difficult but you need to take a day away from technology i struggle doing it i put my phone over the other side of the room i leave it on in case people need to get hold of me like friends or family but i try leaving my phone over the other side of the room and i'm like oh i've got a coloring app on my phone i could just relax a little bit doing some coloring in and then once i've colored a section and i'm like oh i'll just go and check that i've not had an email and that's what we need to not do. We need to take a day away from technology. Don't look at your phone. Don't look, unless like a friend's calling or a family member's calling. Don't load up your laptop. Literally unplug and disconnect from the constant need to be online. And go and do something you like. For me, when I'm not working, I like to crochet. Or I like to read books, um, listen to music go out for walks, visit friends, use that day that you're staying unplugged to visit the people that you don't get a chance to visit when you're really busy with your work. But you have to make sure you disconnect from technology. So you can't even go over there and be like, oh, I'm just going to show you this I found online because then you're going to start changing that mindset again where, oh, I've got my phone in my hand now. I could just check an email. If you can, if you've not got anyone that's going to desperately be needing to get a hold of you, leave your phone at home. Or if you drive to your friend's house, leave your phone in the car. Just make sure it's somewhere where you can't get access to it. And don't ask your friend or a family, whoever it is you're visiting, to borrow their phone. Because then you're not stepping away from technology. As business owners, we are constantly worrying about what people think of us. I sit there and I think, am I putting my best self forward? Am I getting myself out there enough for people to know who I am? That post that I've just written, is there someone sat there like like dissecting it? And you, you're constantly worrying about what someone else is thinking. And the next tip is to focus less on what people think of you because they, always, they want to put their insecurities on you. If they're having a bad day, they want to phone you up um, and they want to vent at you, which is fine if it's not going to affect your mental health so much. If you can sit there and listen to them talking like, and then not worry about it and they feel good, then that's great. But if they're piling their insecurities on you and that you're there thinking, oh, my God, instead of doing that, I better go and see this person and make sure they're OK. I better phone them, make sure they're OK. But make sure they don't need anything from the shops. You're neglecting your self-care and you're taking on that person's insecurities and it needs to stop. You need to remove any negative people from your life. I don't mean remove your friends that are having a problem with something. I mean remove the friends off of Facebook that are constantly posting negative stuff, are constantly ripping down other people. Because again, women should be helping women, men should be helping men, men and women should be helping each other. We should all be lifting each other up in business. We should be supporting everybody. I don't like seeing someone and I won't work with them. If I find that uh, someone that wants to work with me it, on their Facebook page, if I find that they're constantly ripping down someone else because that person does the same business as them and they don't want 
them to get the clients they want the clients i won't work with them because that is such a negative energy that is not needed and they are such negative people that they need to be removed off of your facebook you don't want to be scrolling through your feed and seeing happy happy negative 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 because all those negative thoughts get into your mind and you're just like well actually i'm feeling a bit low now i don't want to go and do that business I'm going to go and make sure this person's okay. I'm going to phone them. I'm going to talk to them. You start to mother them to make sure they're okay. You give them advice. You tell them to come around for a coffee so that they can vent at you some more. And you start dealing with their problems. Your business and your self-care goes on the back burner. You reach burnout. And then you can't do anything. Because, you're again, you're no good to anyone, especially yourself, if you're burnt out. And it's not needed. So all those negative people, especially if they're people that like you've added them because you went to school with them however many years ago and now they're constantly full of negativeness on online, get rid of them. If you haven't met up with that person since you've left school, then they really need to like be taken off of your Facebook because that's negative energy that is being projected there and you just don't need it. So this moves on to tip number five, which is where you need to learn to say no. Because nowadays, we want to say yes to everything. You get a client saying, oh, can you do that for me? And a friend says, oh, can you do that for me? And then another client says, can you do that for me? And then a family member, your partner, your children, if you have them, they're all constantly wanting you to do stuff. You're saying, yes, 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 yes. It's all in your diary. That on top of any of your business stuff, you're so jam-packed that you're awake from silly o'clock in the morning until stupid o'clock at night. You're not getting the sleep that you should be needing. You're not getting time to fit yourself care in. You're rushing through your business tasks, which means that your business is being neglected. And because you've gone to help whoever at that time, you've now got to go and work on your business at task for a client at stupid o'clock at night which means that you then don't get the sleep because if you're concentrating too much on what someone has asked you to do you're not getting your tasks done that you need to do that you want to do until silly o'clock at night so learn to say no if you don't want to give that person a lift if you don't want to go around and babysit if you don't want to go shopping with them if like whatever it is you don't want to do say no to it because it frees up your time it makes you feel good because you know you're in control of your life and you're not at the point where people can push you over i used to say yes to absolutely everything and i hit burnout i didn't i felt really ill and i got into a bit of a negative way of thinking and I was just at the point where I was like right I need to take some time out I need to rethink my plan and what I'm gonna do and then I came back and now I feel fantastic and I schedule in self-care when I can it's a little difficult because I have a full-time job and my two businesses and my radio show and my personal blog um so I schedule as best as I can and I make sure as best as I can that I have self-care in there it's not necessarily every day for me but as long as once a week I'm taking a day where I'm doing stuff for me I know it might not be all day it might just be okay well I'm going to spend the morning watching the programs that I've recorded on my TV and then in the afternoon I'm going to get the work done because my, I've only got like two or three tasks that I need to do so I know I can get them done in the afternoon, but I'm taking the morning for myself. I'm having the phone call with my friend. I'm sending text messages to people, I'm reading a book and watching trashy TV just to chill out. I'm going out and I'm doing what I want. But by two o'clock in the afternoon, I'm now in the mind frame of, yep, I can blast this business out. And it's all because I took the time to look after myself, to take time out from everyone. I've said no, I've not um piled everything on myself and i'm feeling really good about it so tip number six is to take control of your timetable 
So last week we had Sarah Ankney on when we were talking about time management and scheduling. Obviously, those show, there was two shows for that because it was such a big topic. And she was telling us about how she time blocks and she's colour coded for each task, each family member in her planner, on her wall calendar. So she can look at it and say, I've got this, this, this today that absolutely has to be done because it's in pen, they can't be moved. Self-care for her is in pen. Self-care for me will be in pen because it needs to be completed. You need to take care of yourself. So it's one of those tasks, those things that cannot be moved around purely because you have need it. You need self-care at least once or twice a week. Even if it's just sitting and painting your nails, if you're female, or sitting and watching something on TV, reading a book if you're male, going out in the garden, having a barbecue, whatever it is that any of you like to do, that's your self-care. Make sure you do it. So Sarah was talking about time blocking where everything's colour-coded and in pen, and then the things that aren't so important are in pencil and can be rubbed out and moved around. But that is her taking control of her timetable. And you can obviously, you guys do what it is that you need to do for your schedule when it comes to your time management. By taking control of that, you're freeing up hours because you're thinking, oh, actually, I did that task last week. And instead of taking me an hour and a half, it only took me 45 minutes. So I can do that in 45 minutes again this week. That frees up the, four, the extra 45 minutes that I'd scheduled. And I've got 45 minutes to read a book, 45 minutes to watch a television show, 45 minutes to go for a walk. But by seeing your schedule colour-coded and seeing where the gaps are, you're taking control. And you're able to concentrate because you're getting your self-care time in and you know it's in pen, it can't be moved, you have to do it. So the next tip is meditation. It doesn't have to be a massively long meditation. When I was talking about time management the week before last, I said do 90 minutes of work, take a 15 minute break, do another 90 minutes of work, take a 15 minute break. In those 15 minutes, spend five minutes meditating. It relaxes you, it refreshes your brain, and it can refresh your mind to complete your task, like your next task. You've meditated, you've had a drink, you've had something to eat, you're going back on to your next task and you're refreshed because you took that five minutes to chill yourself out. So this is going to sound really silly, but you need to stretch. Everyone sits in front of a computer, well, most people sit in front of a computer from the moment their work hours start to the moment their work hours finish. And when they stand up, they are so cramped and sore and grumpy from it that then if they're spending time with their family because they're in so much pain they're grumpy with their family and it just sets a really bad time for the evening but if you stretch it like it just releases this really relaxed feeling you because it keeps your muscles loose and it helps you just to stay that bit fitter because nothing's tightening up and causing you pain if you're working in an office with other people take yourself off to the bathroom to do it if you don't want them seeing you stretch go to the toilets if there's no one in there you stand in the middle of there and just have a quick stretch but as long as you stretch every two tasks or so or when you're starting to feel uncomfortable it helps you feel so much better so this one a lot of people are minar over this one i think it's a pro other people think it's a con because it takes time away but take a power nap up to 20 minutes napping can leave you ready to complete your next task because you're refreshing your brain. Um, other people sit there and say that they would much prefer to just use that 20 minutes to get on with their next task and then it helps them complete their day early. Or people find that they can't nap because then they're not going to sleep the ne- like that night. If you take your 20 minute nap at a certain point, even if it's before lunchtime, If your day starts at like eight o'clock in the morning, take a power nap at like half 11, because then you've got from 20 minutes later, so 10 to 12, until whatever time it is you wanna go to bed. 
and when you're doing your tasks and you're then with your family you'll be tired enough to be able to sleep but taking a power nap really works guys I make sure I take one every day that I'm working on my business I don't in my full-time job because there's a bit of downtime there where I can have a stretch have something to eat have a drink I have a colleague that we can have a conversation with I have a conversation with like the person who I look after so there's not a lot of stressful situations where I need to take a power nap like because there's not enough time for me to feel tired but when I'm working on my businesses on my days off I get to that point where I'm like I've drained my brain because I'm straining my eyes looking at my screen I'm going to shut everything down my phone is going on silent I'm going to bed for 20 minutes and then I wake up feeling so much better and like when my alarm goes off I'm like great I can now go and get on with the next task because I'm feeling refreshed so tip number 10 is being included because it's been mentioned so many times on my show and it's journaling so Kelly Garcia was on a few weeks ago with me and we were talking about journaling and mindset and I said to Kelly that when I started journaling after a conversation with her something shifted in how I approached things and it made it better for my business um so journaling really helps because if you're journaling out your struggles your thoughts goals or anything that's preventing you from up leveling your business and taking that next step you find that when you're journaling your problems subconsciously you're working out the answer to it and then that comes out as well and you've got it down on paper in pen and it's such a refreshing feeling i found that i was journaling my problem and then my brain was working away and as I was writing along, I was writing out the actual solution for that problem. And I felt so much better for it, not just because I'd found the problem, but because I'd journaled everything out of my brain. I basically, what they call it is brain dumping. I had dumped everything that was blocking me up into my journal. And I felt so much better for it that I was able to go and smash out my tasks for the rest of the day and sign a new client. So... The next one could be done in the evening before you go to bed, when you've switched off your technology at least an hour before you go to bed. Take a nice hot bath, have it relaxing, fill it with some bubbles, light some candles. The guys can do this as well. I'm not saying this is just a female task. Men, you can do this as well. This isn't a sexist show where I'm saying only women can do this and men can't. Men can do it as well. Have a bubble bath. It might seem like a really girly thing to do, but it relaxes you. Light some candles, play some music that you like, and just sit there for as long as you can. If the water starts to go cold, add a bit more hot to it. Obviously, don't flood your bathroom by constantly putting hot in. Let some water out if you need to. But that relaxes you. You're all relaxed, ready to go to bed. You're tired. You get your seven to eight hours sleep in. You're refreshed for the next day. Obviously, you don't want to do the, the nice relaxing bath in the morning. Because I know a lot of you are rushed for the school run or you've got client meetings, networking that you need to do in the morning. And the last thing you want to be doing is trying to relax in the bath when you're knowing, oh, I've got to do this, I've got to do this. You've got a kid coming in to clean their teeth, another kid coming in to use the toilet. You're then worrying about where you've put something for this meeting or whether you're going to hit traffic, get into the networking. Do the bath in the evening before you go to bed. And it really relaxes you. Get some nice bubble bath. It's got a bit of lavender in it, some muscle soak. Radox do a really nice muscle soak, and it's so relaxing. It makes you want to fall asleep in the bath. Um, by the way, when I'm saying about Radox and stuff like that, they're my personal recommendations because I love them so much. I'm not getting paid to mention them. I just want to put that out there. But I literally, I love Radox so much. It's such a nice bubble bath to have when you're stressed out and your muscles are tense as soon as you get into there it's just you feel like this release everything's floating away your candles are flickering nicely it just sets such a lovely atmosphere especially with the music that you're listening to it's gentle and soothing make a playlist call it like something like your relaxing playlist your bath playlist 
don't put anything in there with a heavy beat, any rock and roll, like anything like that. You don't want on it. You want nice, relaxing music to go with your bath and your candles. And it helps you out so much because you could be sitting there and all of a sudden you'll get the answer to the problem that's blocking you from being able to concentrate. And you don't necessarily have a pen to write it down, but if you're like me, you're all, you're, it's such a profound thing suddenly realising that this problem that you've been having for two weeks has been answered because you've been relaxed in that bath. You're going to remember that answer. And it's just such a nice feeling. So the final tip is to eat well. Now, I'm guilty of not eating well. I'll get up in the morning and I'll think, oh, got this to do, I've got this to do, I've got this to do, I've got this to do. And I skip breakfast and then I snack, I work through lunch, I have another snack. And by the evening, I'm wondering why the hell I'm so damn hungry. And it's because I've not eaten during the day. When I'm at my day job, because I make meals for someone that I look after, I make meals for myself at the same time. My colleague and I will we'll all eat together. So I get into that habit there of eating. But when I'm at home working in my business, because you never work on your business, you work in your business, you're in there, it's yours. Um, I literally work through so much and then I sit there and wonder why the hell it is that I'm so hungry and so many of us are guilty of that because they're just like oh lunch can hold on for a second I'm just going to quickly like finish this bit off and then you look at your to-do list and you find that there's another short task so you're like oh I can just knock that one off and I haven't got so much to do at the end like after my lunch break and you keep going like that over and over and over your day at then your office hours are closed and you're just like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. So skipping meals is actually bad for us. Eating our meals correctly at the right times, morning, lunch, dinner, a couple of snacks in between, because when you sat at the computer, let's say that you can get quite hungry, especially if you're looking for something and you're on Instagram looking for something for a client and you're going through, like people have got a habit of they go to a place where it's really nice meals they take a photo of that meal and they stick it on Instagram and then you're like, oh, I'm hungry. But I'm just going to finish this first. And eating our meals when we should and eating proper meals when we should really boosts our health. And that can help us with our self-care because when our health is on point, we're in a great mindset to actually keep ourselves like that. And part of keeping our health on point is taking the time out to do the self-care and relax because we're refreshing our minds, we're refreshing our well-being, our mental health, and doing that leads to us being healthier because when you're thinking negative thoughts in your mind, it's really draining on your body as well, um, and you find that when you're feeling low, you're more susceptible to getting a cold or something like that. Whatever's going around, you find that you're not feeling very well and you're getting that. And then you can't work properly because you're not feeling very well. You've got to cancel meetings because you don't want to pass your cold on to other people. But it, it's all about eating correctly. It's all about eating the right stuff. And there are so many people that if you're stuck on whether you're eating the right stuff, you can talk to. I know that there's a group on Facebook where there's several people in there. It's called Four Networking. And there's people in there that can help you out with your diet if you're wondering whether you're eating properly or if you're needing some help with it find the group request to join chat to some of the people in there they are so such a friendly group they're so much fun to be in that is so much fun to be a part of that group there's other groups as well that you can join and even taking part in that and talking to people that are in the same situation as you really boosts your enthusiasm up and how you're feeling about everything because all of a sudden you realize you're not alone so there are so many more tips that i want to share with you guys but i'd actually be sat here forever so that was the final tip make sure you eat well i'm just going to quickly run through them just to summarize so journal eat well Learn to say no, take control of your timetable, meditate, do yoga, um, 
but whatever you do just make sure you're doing it for you and not anyone else so i want to hear how you guys are doing with your self-care i want to hear what it is that you do that helps you in your business and helps you relax after you've had a hard day working that day jam-packed full of client meetings i want to hear your self-care tips so you can catch me on in the usual places the global voice radio page on facebook my virtual assistant page is empowered va my magazine page is empowered magazine or you can email me at empowered magazine uk at gmail.com send me a message over the, any of the facebook pages i would love to hear from you guys and thank you for listening and i'll see you all next week bye thank you for listening join canna edwards and the roller coaster ride of business every wednesday at 3 p.m eastern on global voice radio where your voice is heard.